Hello everyone, my name is Michael Ulojo Esther and I'm a student of Kema Freak Fashion School right here in the city of Benin. This morning we'll be making a ball dress, yeah I'm super excited and I cannot just wait to start. So if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do where to subscribe because in there you'll see a lot of interesting, interesting videos that you don't want to miss. So subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. So guys, let's get to work. Bye-bye. We'll be making a ball gown for a two-year-old and some of the things you will need. I'm making use of this paper and of course my ruler. I have this lace here, lining, organza and satin. So it's a three-tier ball gown for a two-year-old and the measurements we'll be using includes the half length of 10.5 inches, full length of 32 inches, shoulder length of um, 10 inches, and round the shoulder 26 inches, chest circumference of 21 inches, and the waist circumference of 21 inches. So I'll be working with the back first, just so you find it easier to replicate. So I'm marking out this line as my zip allowance, and I'm taking out my waist, that's the half length, I'm taking out my the half length at 10.5 inches, and I'll just square this out. Okay, so for my shoulder length, I'll divide the shoulder length into two, and that will be at five inches. Then uh, I want to create a shoulder slant. I'm making use of half an inch here. Okay, so for the neckline of the back, I'll stop at 2.5 inches and make it one inch deep. So we'll create the neckline. From the edge of this neckline, I'm drawing out my slant. Remember, I moved in by half an inch this way. So I'm drawing out the shoulder slant. From this shoulder slant, I'll measure exactly what I have here, which is five inches on the armhole to get the position of the chest line. So that's at five inches. So I'll just take out my shoulder length here just to make sure I don't go too inward into the clothes. So I'm making a 90 degree line at this point. Next, I'll go ahead to create my armhole curve. So at the midpoint of this, So at 2.5 inches, which is the midpoint of this, I'll just curve out my armhole, okay? So be careful not to make the curve too sharp. Okay, okay so I, ha I have this. The next thing I'll be taking is my chest line. And the, the chest circumference we are using is 21 inches. So I'll divide 21 inches into four to give me five so all the measurements I'm taking, I'm taking from this zip allowance, not from the top there. My chest circumference is 21 inches, so I'm marking out 5.25 uh, at this point. On the waistline, I also have 21 inches, and that's, you divide the 24, 21 inches by 4 to give you, sorry, this is the waistline and this is the chest line, don't get it confused. So I'm marking out the same 5.25 here. But before that, I need to consider my dart, which will be one inch wide. So instead of 5.25, I need to mark one and 6.25 at this point. So I can connect this to this way. So that's it with the back. I will just go ahead to add allowances to mine. So at the base here, at the waistline here, I'm marking half an inch. At the side, one inch. Mm -hmm. 
at the armhole half an inch the shoulder line half an inch and the neckline half an inch okay so and that's it with the back piece you can just go ahead to cut this out So we have this now i'm going to fold in my zip allowance so that i can use this pattern to create um, the front pattern so i folded here in i haven't folded in my zip allowance i'm just going to place this at this part of my paper which represents the center front okay but before then let me quickly create a startup imagine here So I'll place this here, making sure that the center back aligns with the center front. And I can just mark out all I have here. So I won't make use of this neckline, that's why I'm dotting it out. So you can use a tracing wheel to trace out what you have on this paper. So now I've placed the back pattern on the front and I'll just trace out the shoulder line and the armhole. We are going to modify this armhole a little bit. So remember we have all our allowances already. Okay. Or you can just go through the trouble of recreating the front. For the front, I'll be attaching a yoke. So you have to determine at this point how deep you want your yoke to be. I'll be making use of a four inches long yoke. So from the center front, I'm going to draw a V neckline towards the junction between the neckline and the shoulder. So we have this, this is the yoke, and this is the main front bodies. Okay, so we'll be making a little modification here. Remember that there's already a sewing allowance here of half an inch, so I'll just come down by half an inch and find the midpoint of this line, which is at 2.5 inches, then come in a little bit because this is the armhole for the front. So I'm recreating the armhole for the front. Okay, so this does not include the sewing allowance. Because of that, when I'm cutting mine now, I have to redraw this to add the sewing allowance. I hope you understand what I just did. So we are not making use of this armhole. We recreated a new armhole for the front. So now I will cut out my front bodies. So we have all our allowances in place, so we can just cut.
So in here, I'll separate the yolk from the bodies. Okay, so now we have the upper, the main bodies. We we'll just move ahead to cut some fabric. So for this yolk, from the design which I must have attached somewhere for you to see, we have along the center front neckline, along the neckline you have the lacy part. So I'm just going to place my pattern in such a way that the lace crosses through the center front part of my pattern. So you need to make sure that the lace is symmetrical so that you have the same lacy pattern on both sides. So I think this should do for me. Yeah, I think this should do. I'm just going to stabilize this and we'll cut our yoke this way. So you don't need a sewing allowance for this part because we are making use of the edge of the lace. So we are not sewing it in. And for the other part, we already added sewing allowance. The only part I'll be adding an allowance to here is underneath the yoke. And that's because I slashed it from my front um, pattern here without adding allowance. So I need to sew these two together. Therefore, I will need half an inch allowance on, at the base of my yoke and half an inch allowance at the top of the other part of the body. So I'm about cutting the back now, so I need to open up the zip allowance. So I'm cutting the back out now. So I have these. I'm adding just a little bit here. That's because I'm making it for a child who's not here right now. That may probably need an adjustment. This is for a child I didn't measure. So I, I just added a little bit here and I'll be doing the same for the front. So I have the back piece, I have my yoke, and I'll just cut out the front. So I'm going to cut out the back and the front on my lining and on satin. But I don't need to do that for the yoke, just these two parts of the gown. So as for the back, I will split it open. That's the zip allowance part, the center back.
here I have folded in my doll face satin so this is about two yards I folded in for that waistline of 22 inches for that waistline of 21 inches so from this top I want my satin to be 20 inches long and this is just going to guide me in cutting my lining and the net So because I want it to be 20 inches long, but then I'll fold this edge. So I'm marking out 21 inches. Now I'm going to cut out a layer of hard knit which should be about 1-2 inches shorter than what I have on this satin. So for the next layer which will go underneath this door face satin when we are sewing, I have 3 yards folded and I want to make it about 2 inches shorter than the length of the satin. So I'm just going to cut out this length for my net. Then the next layer after the net is the lining. So I have laid my lining. This is two yards of lining. And the length of the lining I'll be cutting out will be one inch shorter than the length of this door face satin so i've just placed it about one inch shorter so let me quickly on, uh, explain the layers in the ball gown we are making we have three layers of organza which will be showing from the outside before this before this layer of door face satin and next to the layer of door face satin we will have this layer of hard knit after which we we'll have this layer of lining which will be the closest to the body so i've cut out all what we have inside and now i'll be moving on to cut the main part which is this organza part and that's the part we'll be seeing when you look at the ball gown from the outside so the longest layer of this organza has to cover this by two inches thereabout so whatever i'm cutting for the longest layer of this organza it has to cover the door face satin i'm using underneath so you don't have this exposed let me pause it first so i have the longest layer of organza which will be next to the satin so i've made it just one inch longer and that's because I was still folding one inch from here. I hope you understand that. Meanwhile, for the organza, I won't fold it in. I'm just going to use an overlocker to overlock the hem. So next to this on the outside is two other layers of organza. And because I want the difference in height to be uniform, I'm just going to measure this length, then divide it into three. Okay, so let's do that together. I'll be marking out 8 here because I have half an inch allowance here, 8, and from here, 7.5, okay, so the first, the next layer to this will be 15.5 inches long, and the smallest layer, which will be at the top of the dress, will be 8 inches long. I hope you understand that this is the longest layer. I divided it into three to get the length for the other two layers. So the next layer to this will start from the top and end at 15.5 inches. Okay, and then the, the smallest layer will start from the waist and end at eight inches so now i know the length of my other two layers i can just set this aside and cut on the organza 
So I have my three layers of organza ready. This is eight inches, 15.5 inches, and about 22 inches long. So when we are sewing this, next to this layer will be this, next to this will be this, next to the longest organza layer will be the doll face satin, and next to it will be the layer of net. Next to the layer of net will be the layer of lining. And that is it with the lower parts of this ball gown. I've cut out this band for a cape that would be more like an off-shoulder cape along the front and back bodies. So the band is 13 inches long and five inches wide. So for each side of the arm, we'll just have this folded in like you have seen in the final picture. So we just have this folded in along that it will run from um, just a little bit beside the center front and it will cover the arm then touch the back bodies. So that's it with the cutting. We'll move on to sew our ball gown. Thank you.